Hi guys and girls, I'm Wolfgang and today we will build an Italian supercar. Yeah, of course not, this is Tank Encyclopedia, of course it will be a military truck. I'm talking about the Lancia 3 Aero that I had promised two videos ago. This was the most widely used military cargo truck in the Italian forces during World War II. Let's see how it will look after assembling, painting and weathering. I would like to mention that this kit was generously sponsored by our friends at IBG Models, but rest assured I will give my honest opinion on it. If you want to have a look at another one of their kits, click on the upper right corner. Let's start with the assembly portion. Unlike the simplistic Opel Blitz I had built previously, this kit has a whopping 19 sprues with highly detailed parts. A lot of them are just the rods for the tarp, you can ignore them if you want. A photo edge thread, clear parts and this is almost twice more parts than some tank kits in this scale. I did buy the bullet and order the photo edge bending tool just for this kit. It's needed if you want to build up and apply the small photo edge parts. It cost me around 20 euros which is not the steepest price but still quite some money for one tool. The wheels are made from the same plastic as all other parts and are extremely detailed. It took me way more time to find the rubber size markings on my own full size car than it took me to do the same thing on this kit. Don't judge me, I'm technologically differently abled. The wheels consist of three pieces each and make painting the rubber tires easy. Let's work on those first. I opted to glue them together before painting since a number zero brush will be precise enough to paint the edges. You can choose to paint them before assembly though. Next up, the engine. Do you remember the Opel Bits 1.5 ton truck engine? Well, that was a toy compared to the Tipo 102 in this vehicle, both in real life as well as in kit form. The detail is amazing and the thing goes together like a dream. Just be sure to take your time to clean the parts, there's some minor flashing present, but that kit doesn't have any. Oh, and use some sharp sprue cutters, there are some really tiny and fragile parts, you don't want to break them haphazardly by removing them from the sprues. Some thin cement like Tamiya Extra Thin or Gunze Mr. Cement S will help a lot during the assembly process. Let's start working on the frame. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 You know what? This makes nuclear science seem simple. All jokes aside, it built up pretty fast after cleaning the parts and everything fits very well. It's just too tiny to give me interesting footage of it and I advise you to get some fine sanding sticks and emery boards since some parts have slight flashing that needs being taken care of. A sharp hobby knife will be your other best friend. The only parts that need a lot of attention are the leaf springs. The driver's cabin consists of four sub-assemblies and again there's no footage, tiny parts and my big hands don't mix well. The total part count of the cabin and its interior part is 21. That is more than the total part count of some other kits. The attention to detail is a strong point of this kit and this comes with the high number of parts, which is fine for me, I really enjoy such builds. If you want to power through this kit, I advise you to take a leaf and open a cold one. It will take some time. And if you are looking for something simple and quick, this might not be the kit for you. The front bumpers were quite hard to get right and I think I still glued the lower one in wrong and removed it after some consideration. Be mindful of these parts and get a super glue that has a relatively slow drying time in order to move the parts as comfortably as possible. Eh, it is what it is, small errors happen. These are all easily fixed with some tarps or other equipment that could be thrown over set part by the crew. As you noticed, I'm building the truck with the engine bay wide open. Looking at historical photos, the cover was often removed during the North Africa campaign, probably due to the fact that the engine cooling was insufficient in the scorching desert heat and every bit helped. Can't imagine the amount of sand getting in would have been fun though. 
Another reason I am doing this is to show off the highly detailed engine that's included in the kit. The worst part are the metal rods that are supposed to support the tarp. I tried to make the track bed open with the rods on top, but this backfired because these things are too flimsy to cut out in one piece. They just break off like crazy. I tried to cut them with the hobby knife, screw cutters, and the real scalpel which I had from my time at the university. Not even medical still did the job. So I built the version with the tarp on top of the bed. The last steps are quite easy to get right, I won't bore you with them. The instructions do a great job of explaining the right way to assemble the part. First things first, I'm not using a primer since the AK Real Color line has excellent coverage properties. I decided to go with the Desert Paint Scheme for this specific kit since it will look great alongside the Panzer IV I have built earlier. The colors I used are Dunkelgab and Olive Green from AK Interactive, specifically their Real Color line lacquer paints for World War II German vehicles. The Lancia 3 Aero was an upgraded version of the Lancia Aero. It was powered by a new engine, a Lancia Tipo 102, 6900cc straight 5 diesel engine that produced 93 horsepower. The 3 Aero was equipped with a leather frame and a leaf spring suspended solid axles at the front and rear. About 9500 diesel powered 3 Aero's were produced during the Second World War. The official nomenclature of the military type was NM, Nafta Militare, simply meaning diesel military. The top speed was 45 km per hour with a range of 450 km. Civil versions were equipped with the gas and petrol engines and built until 1949, finally being replaced by the Lanciar as a Tau. I paint all parts with the base Dunkel Gap tone first and I finish small details with the brush. Some color modulation is done on the tarp as well to make the model pop out a little more and make the simple paint job more interesting. There are multiple ways of achieving this, but I find that the easiest way to do so is to overspray the base tone with different shades of the sand color. You could of course use pre-shading with white, grey and black base color, there's no wrong or right way to do things in this hobby, just have fun. For the scratches I use acrylic paints since they are easily applied by brush and they can be removed easily if things go south. First I'm doing the light chipping color and apply it with a sponge over the edges of the kit and where the crew often handled equipment like showers or pickaxes. Take your time here and make sure to only use the smallest amount of paint possible to make the chips small and not unrealistic. I'm also connecting the edges and some inner parts with a 5 over 0 brush in order to make them even more realistic. Again, take your time to get this right and don't get frustrated if the scratches don't turn out perfectly the first time, you can remove them with acrylic paint thinner and start again. So what's so interesting in the truck? It's just some ordinary transport vehicle and has nothing to do with tanks other than being able to supply them. Nope, this truck had quite some alternative uses during the Second World War. The more common ones included the Mountain Canuna da 9053 or 117 Howitzer. My sincere apologies to all Italian speaking viewers if I butchered the words. 
The most interesting attempt to make more use of the vehicle was probably the free arrow of Dindato, a makeshift armored fighting vehicle built to fight partisans. Our in-depth article on the Blindato is definitely worth a read, you can do so by clicking on the link in the description. The Lancia Free Arrow was also widely used as a tank transport, with the armored vehicles carried directly on the flatbed or on a separate trailer. In this way the tanks could be transported faster and with less wear and tear on the suspension and transmission. This is also how they could be relocated to their repair depots when inoperable. I'm now going over the bigger spots and edges with a dark brown color to emulate worn steel surfaces that have been stripped of paint completely. Same rule as before, take your time. It may sound like I'm constantly repeating myself, but the free arrow was also borrowed in significant numbers by the Germans after the September armistice and was properly captured by Allied troops as well at some point. This means that the color scheme option for us modelers increases while maintaining historical accuracy. It's also a great opportunity for diorama builders where there are hundreds of possibilities to include this track in an interesting scene. The truck could be carrying Italian tanks, German light tanks or anything that's captured and small enough to fit on the truck bed. Of course it can be used as a normal transport vehicle for fuel, troops, mechanical parts and all sorts of things one could encounter on the battlefields. The detail of the internal parts make it perfect subject to a rotten battered and or exploded vehicles. Of course one could make a post-war civilian truck without any problems too. I advise you to buy the other released kits with the guns already included out of box if you want to build those variants, but the German 88mm flag gun would be an interesting option to kit bash, even if it's completely historically inaccurate. The last step of the chipping is to apply some rust streaks and specks with thin down oil paints and AK interior streaking effects. You should take care to add only tiny amounts to most drag bone scratches since the rust gathers only on surfaces that are not protected by paint. Just not all of them, that would also look fake. In case you are wondering, yes, rust also accumulates in the desert. Since I planned a desert vehicle, I only add some light dust pigments for the last feathering step. I simply mix the pigments with tap water and apply them with a small brush on the lower parts of the kit. The excess can be removed with a damp cotton swab. I made sure to apply it on all wheels, especially on the profiles and the air pressure markings. The bumpers and fenders were shown no mercy either. I would have liked to add some more details like jerry cans and some spare Panzer IV parts to make the truck look like it's an actual use for its intended purpose. But you know, shit happened with the metal rods and here we are. It's always a good idea to keep the spare parts of older kits, you never know when they will come handy and in the worst case you can trade them with your local friendly modelers who can offer some parts that you want and need. Let me give you my insights on the kit. The parts are extremely detailed and the part count is rather on the maniac high scale of things. I couldn't find any indication on how many individual parts there are in the kit, but it sure seems like a lot more than Italeri's T3485 kit and that one had an almost complete interior. 
The build process was pretty simple once I've got in the flow. The photo etch parts are really fiddly and require an enormous amount of focus to get in place. I highly recommend a slow drying cyanoacrylic glue for this purpose and a set of very fine tweezers. The plastic parts went together like a charm and IBG once more proved that their engineers and mold process have a very high standard. The only exceptions were the front fenders and the bumper, but I'm pretty sure that's due to my clumsiness more so than the bad fit. As for the tarp rods, I just gave up on those, I simply could not make them work. If you want to make the cargo bed open, be very careful. A not so important issue I found is that there are no figures included. Well, most people buy aftermarket figures anyway, so who cares. Some accessories would have been nice as well, but it is what it is, and the kit delivered but it advertised magnificently. Oh, and the decals are quite nice as well, I highly approve of this kit. Should you buy it? It is not perfect, but it is definitely a very high quality. Given the high number of pieces and complexity, a couple of issues are to be expected. Also, if you are an experienced modeler that is looking for an amazingly detailed and well-made kit, this is the one for you. If you want to build something quick and easy, stay away. Go for something in 70 second scale. The Hoai I built earlier is perfect for that. It is also a kit of a very common Italian vehicle that was widely used as a tank transporter if you want something to go along with your Italian tanks. It also had a couple of self-propelled gun variants if you want to improvise something. If you like this video and want to see more tank related content on our page and on YouTube, please visit our Patreon site if you would like to donate. For more interesting content visit one of the shown outlets. Thanks for watching this video, next time we will take a look at the tank again. Herr General.